Ladies and gentlemen, have it loud! Give me a hell yeah! What's up, man? Let's go! Hell yeah! Thank you for joining, sir. I uh, appreciate you being here, man. Uh, we've been jamming FDCU and a couple other tracks for, for Hotman and have been a fan for a while. It's very cool of you to join us. For those that may not know who you are, though, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug and promote anything and everything. Yeah, most definitely. What's going on, y'all? For y'all who don't know who I am, I go by the name of Heavy Law. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming out of... Uh, right now, I'm hailing out of Grand Forks, North Dakota, by way of Rockford, Illinois. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, you know, I just want to also thank y'all for having me on here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, been a fan of the show for a while, too. Uh, shout out to King Rest Records. You know what I'm saying? Theo and the boys. Shout out to the tribe. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Smoke Ogo. You know what I'm saying? For having me on here, you know? Shout out to Grand Forks for supporting me. And shout out to Rockford for, you know, having That's... my back through this whole, through my whole music thing, you know what I'm saying? And shout out to my peoples. That's how you promote right there. I like that. Lots of oh, shout yeah. outs. Hell yeah. I, I feel like the first time we ever heard your music was was originally we were, we were jamming Sherm Stick with Kings. King showed us Sherm Stick and then then showed us your music. And it just goes hand in hand. It's a perfect fit right there at Kings, at Kings Records. How did you guys initially link up? Yeah. So, um, with Theo, with Theo in particular, Shermstick. So, uh, they actually, so Shermstick actually hit me up and was like, Yo, I got this song, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you go ahead and hop on it? And at first, I'm not gonna lie, just me personally, you know, I was like, All right, cool, you know, because when people just ask me for features, I don't know why, I just I just get weird, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but. Nah, so he hit me up and was like, yeah, I got this song, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, hop on it. Me and uh, me and my boy Chris Glenn, shout out Chris Glenn, by the way, and shout out Entropy too. So, uh, yeah, Chris was like, yeah, man, just go in there and come out with a verse, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what you got. And then Sherm started hyping me up, and then they persuaded me. They persuaded me because <laughs> I walked you. in there. Yeah, I walked in there and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna come in here and do the verse. But I walked in there and they had a little pint of they had a little pint of some of my little favorite drink. And I'm just like, oh man, see y'all, y'all knew what y'all was doing. Excellent. But Excellent. uh went in there, laid out the verse, and yeah, uh Theo hit me up and was like, Well, Sherm actually was like, yo, uh Theo over at King's Rest trying to figure out like who you is, and I'm saying, like, he wants you to sign. And I was like, sign what? Like what you mean sign like what is he trying to have me sign and then he was just like like you want you to like come over here like he heard some of your music and he think like you'd be a good fit over here and then now you know that's when that little voice in your head started talking like all right this is what you this is what you wanted so now what you gonna do with it and then yeah i just took the chance and went with king's rest records and you know what i'm saying now the next motion is to to make much history as possible I love it. I love it. And you said in the beginning that that you didn't do a whole lot of features in the beginning, or that kind of wasn't your thing. It really wasn't, just because of the simple fact of like I'm, I'm not one dimensional, but it's just the fact of like my music is kind of like everywhere. So, you know, what I'm saying like when certain people ask me like, "Hey, get on," or you know, "Hop on this feature," it's just kind of like. It was just something I wasn't used to being outside of my comfort zone with. So I, 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 I'm not really, or I can say at the time, I wasn't really a big fan of stepping outside of my comfort zone. But then you just like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to step outside the comfort zone. No, I get it. And as an MC, there's definitely growth right there by doing that. So now it's probably more comfortable. You're more comfortable doing it in the future for, for uh, and now you can kind of pick and choose uh, your, your features, I would imagine, also. Uh, Heavy, yeah. my, my co-host today is Cody. He's in a band called Echo Break. Cody, do you have a question for Heavy before we uh, before we play one of my favorites? And then we have, I think, uh, a little teaser exclusive of something that nobody's heard yet, right? That is correct. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah! Yeah, hell yeah! 
<laughs> what you got for him, Cody? All right, man. So I took today and listened to your whole discography. So my main question is going to be, my main question is, when you are finding a beat, what do you look for in your beats? That's a good question. Um, To be honest with you, it's more so like the vibe of the beat. Because, like, if, you, if I can't vibe to it, then there's really no point of me, like, making the song. And so, and then also, I also give an ear as to, like, what my surrounding is as far as like the people around me what they listen to as well and then so that's where i kind of also get my beats from it's like okay like i like this beat but it's like will will others like the beat and if others do like the beat it's like what what about the beat grasp them like it's always something about the beat that just gets my attention every time so that's that's mainly what i look for like in the beat is what grabs my attention the most about it. How long have you been awesome. rapping for? Like, uh, did you, before you put out music to the world, like, have you been rapping for years and years before that? Um, everything was kind of like, not really hit and miss, but I, I'd say I didn't really get like serious about music because for the longest time, I don't like, I, I used to dance like, routine and team dance talent show dance so before like that, battling always, like battling i'd say more like talent shows and like competitions oh cool hell yeah it was never like a in the crew like a like the you got served battle it was it was it was like you know one team at a time up there for sure so for the longest time i always just thought i was you know gonna be like a dancer or something and you know, I wanted to dance back up in videos and stuff like that. And then it just got to the point where I realized, like, I knew more about music. And then I just always felt free writing music, but I really didn't get serious about it until, like, 2014, 2015 is when I really was like, all right, I could probably do something with this. And then... Just decide to see where it takes me. When before you step on stage and perform, uh, like at a gig or a show or just a feature live or anything like that, do you have any interesting pre-show warm-ups that just kind of get you in the zone? Um, actually, yeah. So I have this weird thing I do, where okay, so I don't have like you know most of the show I don't have like my own dressing room i'm not i'm not that big yet to wear my name on the doors and stuff but i will go find like a dark room or like a bathroom and just complete darkness and silence for like five minutes just to get all my thoughts together almost and like then, a meditation experience kind of yep i like and that and then also if my mom is not there then I have to call my mom before every show. I'd probably have to say movie-wise, it'd be the faculty. I don't know if you've ever yeah, yeah, yeah. heard the, that. With where the, the coke turns him, the coke kills him. Yeah. <laughs> the coke the coke kills him. <laughs> I've definitely yeah. seen that movie before. For sure. All right. Uh give me a second to look up some trivia on that. And uh we're gonna start with with FDCU. What what uh what does FDCU stand for? Which I'm pretty sure you say in a song, but for people that may not know, and then and then what what is what was the writing experience like? That this was just a just a straight party vibe, right? Yep. So FDCU is uh stands for fuck the club up. For those that and, don't know, and really, um, I have this other song that is on it's not like on the major platforms but it's on spotify i mean not spotify uh soundcloud excuse me so it's on soundcloud and that song is called move around okay and move around was basically like i wanted to make a mosh pit song so i was like all right cool so i made the mosh pit song and then somebody told me like man you should drop like a part two 
to move around. And I was like, yeah, but like, you know, what can I, what can I do? And he was like, well, okay. In a mosh pit, you move back and step back, but like, you got to make some where it's like you, you, you fuck the whole scene up. Like you, like the whole club vibe is just going fucking crazy. Like what, how, how would you do that? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I guess you tear that bitch up and shut that shit down. Exactly. And my friend, my homeboy, J5 Homicide, told me, he was like, write that down right now. Write it down right now before you fucking forget it. And I wrote it down. And then... And the rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history, man. <laughs> Let's do it. I Give me a second on the trivia, and we're going to jam it right now. Yes, sir. If you guys are feeling it, please go and uh, support Heavy. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, all the above. And shut the sh down. Let's go. Yo, what was in the hunch punch that night? What was in the hunch punch? That's actually um my mama's fav famous tri uh tribal juice. Awesome. <laughs> what was in the was in the tribal Tri juice? It's a mixture of uh, Hennessy, Douce, Lemonade, and Sprite, I believe. And can't forget about the pineapple juice. Hell yeah. That sounds delicious. Let's see if we can stump you on this faculty trivia. Here we go. Oh, by the way, faculty is not what I was expected, but I'll take it. Here we go. We start off with an easy one. If you get the easy one, it turns into a very hard one. The second question. First question is, who plays the school nurse? Miss Harper in the faculty. Who'd you say? Selma Hayek. That is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. I have to do a swig of hot sauce because I was not able to stump you on the first one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to skip that one. We just don't have time to do that today. We don't have time to do that today. So, did you bring any any? Uh, I know you didn't bring hot sauce, but did you bring any any drink or anything? Like, do you want a shot together? I would I would be honored. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do a shot together. Right here, Crown Royal Peach. Hell yeah! Okay, cool. Cody, what's another question that you have for Heavy? All right, so I gotta know. Out of all of your discography, the one that caught me off guard was Unwell. Mm. Um. Not only because of the uh, Matchbox 20 part on there, but your lyrics. When you were sitting down with that track, what kind of vibe were you going for to mix yourself in with that Matchbox 20? Another good question. Um, To be honest with you, that song is... Okay, so... I have this like thing where it'd be like random phases where just out of nowhere, I'll just randomly play like just throwback songs and I'll just be on them for like a week or so. So literally riding in my van and that song comes on the radio and I'm like, wow, I ain't heard this since I was like a kid. And then it gave me like a nostalgic feeling, but then, you know, that feeling also made me like, man, like where his time like where his time gone. And then at that time I was going through like personal things in my life. So I literally reached out to my homeboy and was like, yo, I got a track we should do, but we gonna have to like put feelings into it. And then he was like, well, just give me the beat. And so I gave him the beat and then he was like, so what we gonna call it and all that I was like well we gonna call it unwell and he was like all right he said so what is it mainly gonna be about and i was just like like just reality like whatever whatever you going through right now just put it just put that all on the pad and then he told me he was like nah why don't you take what you've been through and what you're going to and what you're going through right now like, this is your, this is your like producer the, saying this no, this is this is the dude who's on the track with me. Okay, okay. And so he told me, he's like, why don't you just take what you're going through 
and what you've been through and kind of like comparison into the two. And I was just like, that makes more sense. And then he was just like, I'm telling you, that's how he was like, that's how you get great stories. Like that's how artists come up with their stories. So yeah, it was really just, I was just going through some personal stuff at the time and that song was just hitting home a little hard. I can dig it for sure. <laughs> uh, Heavy, let's cue up this new track that you got. It looks like it yes, says, sir. I'm lit again, but it's all one word. Yes, sir. What, you want to plug this song? What's the song about? I mean, I think it's obvious, okay. but maybe it means something different to you. It's really just like, because uh, I, took, I took a break from doing music for a while. And then everybody was just asking, like, when are you getting back in the studio? Because uh, FDCU was probably like one of my last songs I dropped. And that was like 20, I want to say like 2021 or something like that. So it's like been a during, while. It's like during COVID, that's when that song dropped? After COVID, because we, we were just allowed back outside. Okay. And... Yeah, everybody was asking me, like, when when you getting back in the studio? And then my homeboy, Kev, well, literally, we were in the studio, and he was, like, talking shit. And he was like, man, you ain't got it no more. You done lost it. He was like, you did the, he was like, you did the one little show where they, uh, at the Empire, there's a, it's called the Empire Art Center, and it's, like, big deal. So he was like, oh, you did that one little show. Now you think you, you know, just, just hyping my head up. And now I, I literally looked at him. I was like, fuck you. I'm lit again. And he was like, you ain't fucking lit. And then, yeah, I recorded the song. And then me and him both just looked at each other. And then we was like, I'm lit again. And then we just decided like, yeah, that's what we're going to call the song. He said he's so back. It's my comeback song. Hell yeah. How much of the song am I allowed to play? I don't want to, you know, ruin the exclusive uh, that it drops tomorrow, correct? Yeah, it drops tomorrow on all available music platforms. On all streaming platforms, it is available and it drops tomorrow. I'll do about 30, 40 seconds of it. Baby, check the drip from longitude to latitude. All right, I did a little bit longer than I thought I was supposed to do. I did 55 seconds, but it drops <laughs> It drops tomorrow. It, have it you, drops tomorrow. Who's, who's uh, let's say, let's say money doesn't matter. This artist, particular artist, wants two hundred grand for the feature. It doesn't matter. Who is the ideal? I got to have you on a song for for a feature or a remix that that you'd like to uh, work with. Mm, for that particular song, just just in general, maybe something that you haven't even uh, recorded yet. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna lie. For that particular song, if I had the chance. I would probably put, I'd probably put Offset on there. Offset from Migos. I put Offset on there. Hell yeah! Why him in particular? Is that just that's just somebody that uh, you you look up to or you appreciate? It's just like the the type of beat it is. Okay, I, I can say. I, I, I hear you on that. I hear you. I'd say either either Offset or Kodak. I I put on one of, or or one of them two. I I most definitely put on that beat. Just because I feel like, you know, that's their, that's, that's more so their style and their flow. Definitely. Oh, yeah. But, but if we talk about just like a feature, like an all out feature, like as of right now, um, 21. Uh, I'm not really a 21 fan like that, to be honest with you. Neither am I, but I feel like he would fit on it. I can see 21 on that, but, um, Ski Mask. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, ski let's, God. let's go back to this faculty real quick. Because okay. I'm going to stump you on this one. Here we go. In the movie, believe it or not, a famous designer paid money to have his clothing seen throughout the movie. Which famous designer's clothing is worn by almost every single member in the movie? Every single actor or actress in the movie. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So we talking late 90s. Smart. So I like the thought process. Time, and it's a high movie. Uh, 
Was it Tommy Hilfiger? Mother That is correct! Damn it! Damn it! Well done. You've seen the faculty a couple of times. All right, I have to do a shoey here in a second. I'll explain to you what that is. So basically, we had a we had a guest on from Australia. I don't know, uh, a, a little over a year ago, maybe maybe 15 or 16 months ago, and they were like, "Can we do a shoey together?" And I was like, "What the f is a shoey?" And they're like, "Oh, you have to take your shoe off and pour your drink in it." And I know that's not for everybody, and I actually am not gonna do that. I have a designated shoey shoe, so landed on that. I don't wear this shoe, but I have to pour a beer on it and drink it because I was not able to stump you, sir. You've definitely seen the faculty a couple of times. It's obvious. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll end on a final couple questions. I'll ask one, I'll have Cody, and then I'll throw in one final one. My One of my final questions for you is, what would you like to accomplish in 2023? Like, Do you have some goals set that are that you're trying to hit? Okay. Um. So one of my main goals this year is to just as far as like an artist is to get my name out there more and do bigger shows like um i actually just signed up to go to this like competition and um i don't know if you guys know who drewski is i don't okay so he's basically like a God damn. I don't know exactly what he does, but he he's a comedian, but he's like big within the music industry. Okay. And so he's having like he's on tour, right? Like he's on his uh comedy tour, but he has um Oh shit, excuse me. He has opportunities for like artists, you know, whether if you sing or if you dance or you know, it whatever you do, you come on there and it's it's a joke, but I'm still using it as like, you know, publicity wise. So I'm going to use that as a chance to, you know, try to get my name out there more. And one of the biggest things I'm probably trying to accomplish this year is just not holding back and just taking every, every chance that comes across me, just, just taking it. No hold bars. Hell yeah. Cody will say final question for you, sir. I, as the year goes on um, and you start planning to release more and more songs throughout the year, are you planning to do like an EP or are you going to go the waterfall method and just stick with singles? So um, I'm actually going to, so my I'm going to release my album in May. And in between that time, I'm going to release um, two EPs. So it's just kind of going to be like a like a single, and then the EP, and then another single, and then the other EP, and then that's that. By that's that hustling time, right there. That's working. It's working. Like, oh, man. Stays in the studio. <laughs> it's like that. that. Time, you know, get the album hyped up, and by May, by uh early May, mid May, it's time to push the album out. Hell yeah, heavy. My my final question for you, sir, and I appreciate your time is uh, we don't have a lot of MCs on the show. We have a lot of bands on the show, and I ask them about like things they see other bands doing wrong when they gig together, they tour together. What is what is something that you see other MCs in your area commonly, they make this mistake, and you would you would would if you were to give advice to somebody that wants to be in your position or wants to start rapping, like what advice would you give a smaller artist? Um... Don't don't let your ego get in the way, really. Like a lot of a lot of people have a lot of people their ego, especially like being local artists, like, you know, and I got nothing but love for my local artists, but what a lot of us have to stop doing as artists is just because we even did a couple shows and we have a name out there, we gotta stop like walking around with our chest poked out because our our music catalog is smaller than our ego is and so it's like a lot of a lot of artists they let their pride get in the way or their egos and it's like we really can't do that especially because we're in a small town 
and we're all on the same goal. Like, I understand if, you know, this person had a million views and then this person had a million views and, but it's like, we're all working towards the same goal. And I feel like we should just stop really like tarnishing each other and more so like everybody working towards the same goals. But the first thing everybody has to do is they have to let that ego go. Like, Oh, I'm better than you. Like, but why are you better than me? Just because you did like two or three more shows than me. When in reality, it's like we're we're still the same because we're trying to get out of here. That's great advice. So uh, the single drops tomorrow. I'm lit again. We got two EPs, two singles, and an album all coming by May. And two music videos. Amazing. Oh, snap. That is amazing. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for joining Heavy. This is very, very cool of you to do this. And uh, we were, man, that's a lot of music. We're excited, man. We'll be able to jam a ton of records on the show here for you in the near future. Please, if it's okay with you, uh, can we check in in like six or seven months post May and uh, just see where you're at, see if there's anything we can do to help you. Uh, maybe you have more advice, things have changed. I don't know, but if it's okay with you, we do this again in like six, seven months. Yes, sir. Most definitely. I, I really appreciate y'all having me. Thank y'all for giving me a chance to step on here. So I really appreciate y'all for having me. And yes, we most definitely can set something up. Yes. A hell yeah. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, have a love. Yeah, hell yeah. Have an excellent day, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take it easy, brother.